Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Wednesday live stream. My name is Iwana. I'm part of the Washi Tape Shop team, and I also have my own YouTube channel and blog called Mistral Spirit. So today we're going to focus on bullet journaling. And if you voted on our YouTube, on our um, Instagram story, thank you very much. Actually, bullet journal spread ideas won by a landslide, which was kind of surprising. And so that's what we're going to chat about today. I'm going to give a really brief overview of bullet journaling for anyone who's never tried it before. But we did have a live stream a few weeks ago about bullet journal essentials and how to start bullet journaling. So I went through all of the tools that you might need, different types of spreads that you might want to start out with. And today we're going to focus more on the spreads, but that's the plan. So in the comments, let me know, does anyone use a bullet journal here for planning? Or what other kind of planner do you use if you are a planner? And good morning. So uh, again, if you missed the start, I think I start before people join sometimes. But my name's Iwana. I'm part of the Washi Tape Shop team. And this is our Wednesday live stream. We do these every Sunday and Wednesday at 10 a.m. EST on Instagram and then 9.30 on TikTok. And I've always got my coffee with me because I'm drinking it. It's 10 o'clock in the morning here in uh, Kingston, Ontario. So Toronto time. And we're gonna chat about bullet journaling today. Um, let's see. I, I saw a few no's. Does anyone do bullet journaling who's joining in our live stream right now? And I've got all of my bullet journals, almost all of them. I think the first few are missing from here. But this is my stash of bullet journals and a couple others. These were my earliest ones, actually. Fun little tip, if you've got a plain cover for your bullet journal, there's a lot of different ways to spice that up. So this was a uh, vinyl sticker that I made using a Cricut machine. So. The Krika machine is definitely quite expensive, but if you've got some stickers, you can decorate like that. Same thing here, I did the same technique. And that's my YouTube channel and blog, Mistral Spirit. But what I've done for my most recent bullet journal, I don't have my Krika machine here at university on campus, but I've just added some stickers along the edge and I really like how that looks. These are all stickers from the washi tape shop. Um, Good night from Asia. Someone's just starting. Well, perfect. I tried, but I couldn't fill it properly and I stopped, unfortunately. Someone said, yes, I use a bullet journal. I want to start. Um, that's a lot. Yes. <laughs> Someone said that over on TikTok as well. That's a lot of notebooks. And I don't usually carry them around with me, but I've got them here, of course, for um, sharing with you guys and also for my YouTube channel. I'm also going to play some music. I realized I forgot to do that today. Okay, we're going to go for a bit of an upbeat playlist. So yeah, the March theme, someone did a Harry Potter theme for March. That's fun. I actually, um, I was hoping that more people would vote for the March, late March setup because I haven't set up my March bullet journal. That's what it looks like. So I'll show you a bit more about that. Um, but let's start with some of the basics. I'm going to flip my camera around and chat about how to start bullet journaling really briefly. Again, the replay of that YouTube, uh, of that Instagram live is on YouTube. That's probably the best place to see because you can easily navigate to different parts of the video. But all of the replays are always on YouTube and Instagram, so you can check those out there. I currently use a bullet journal. Before that, I used to have printed planners. That is a great segue into how to start bullet journaling and what it is. So let me flip the camera around and I'll give you a few intro bits about bullet journaling. Whoops. <laughs> I think I pressed the rotate button like 10 times there and back and forth. Also, I see something over there. Um, that's for you. So if anyone is watching and wants to grab anything from the shop, this is our discount code, especially for the live streams. Um, it's the best discount that you can get at the shop. So it's 15% off and you can uh, just use the code LIVE15 at checkout. So 
that's a great way to support the live streams as well if you've been joining those regularly and just to let us know that you're coming from there. So here's my stash. And to start with bullet journaling, I'm gonna just go through the first few spreads that I made in this bullet journal. This was my very last one that I had. And I think that's a good intro into like what you really, what it is and how you can start. Look at that, perfect music timing too. Let me know if it's too loud, by the way, I can adjust as we go. All right, so a bullet journal, first of all, kind of is, is just a system. Um, and there are two things I like to say with that. The first is that it's chronological. So it's really just a notebook in which you put things like sticky notes that you'd normally put on your wall, um, you put your calendar, you can put that in here, your daily to-dos, you pop those into your bullet journal, and everything is contained in this nice little bound notebook. So a really good thing with that is that because it's chronological, you often remember where, uh, like around the time that you wrote whatever you did into your bullet journal. So it's quite easy to find things as well. Um, definitely more so than sticky notes, which was the system that I used before bullet journaling and those can just go everywhere. So it's a, a little bit of a contained system in that sense. And then something I really liked, if you tuned into our live stream with Kat last um, Sunday, she said that bullet journaling for her is essentially a planner that she designs herself. And I think that's also a fantastic way to put it. It's basically a blank notebook and for some people, planners aren't the right fit there aren't the right spreads in them or they need to be custom to whatever projects you're working on. If you've got lots of different things going on, maybe you need more room for the daily um, tasks. And so that's what bullet journaling is essentially. You're setting up your own layout and going with that. And then in terms of getting started, um, the tools really, you just need a blank notebook. The first few notebooks that I used were line notebooks. The ones that I've got here are all dotted. So this one is a moleskin, this is Scribbles That Matter, London Gifties, and a Loic Term, and these ones as well, Loic Term, Moleskin, and Moleskin. I really like the Moleskin just because it's got thinner paper and um, there aren't too many notebooks like that. And then other than that, uh, what I like to do to start um, is have a few intro spreads in my notebook. So this is a good example. I've got some collections that's what these are called so one is regular maintenance tasks and it's kind of a list of things that i can do for self-care in a sense it's almost like a self-care spread and then here i've got lifestyle habits i like to do this spread pretty much in every bullet journal that i've started and i'll show you the very first iteration of it which was in this notebook oh that's another thing you can do a cover page So that's what it looked like originally. You can see it's changed a little bit. A lot more colorful here. This was um, in 2017, I think, or it doesn't say a date on the cover. So quite a while ago, and as you can see, it's kind of changed over time, but the premise of this spread is that it's kind of like a lifeline, like in video games where you lose the lifeline as you go. This one is a lifeline that you gain as you go. So you've got these habits, main buckets broken down here, and then each habit is broken down into lots of little steps and genuinely steps. So these are milestones that you can achieve and fill up your lifeline as you go. What I love about this spread in particular, and if you haven't tried something similar for your habits, I would recommend to try, is that it's, very, it's a very visual way to see what habits you're focusing on at the moment. And a huge thing with habits is focusing on a few at a time and working towards building them up. So starting small, you know, if you're trying to work out, then uh, a great strategy for that is to start with the habit of um, waking up and putting on your workout clothes first thing in the morning and doing five minutes of a, a workout. And then some, often as you go on, that turns into longer. So that's my biggest tip for building habits. And let's see, someone said I have my English exam tomorrow, the last one. 
good luck. Um, it's definitely midterm and exam season right now. I had two last week. Um, I hope it's saved. So all of these live streams are going to be saved on Instagram live, um, Instagram video like IGTV and on YouTube. They just take a few hours to upload. So that's the intro spreads in my bullet journal. And then, and then you've got your dailies. So this is one of my favorite spreads because it's a little bit of a memory spread as well. I was traveling at the time and keeping track of some fun things that were happening with some photos here and there. Um, and like just kind of this one I found online. It was a really cool photo. It's a, an old one. It, not of me, but from a long, from a long time, time ago, like a vintage photo. And then a few like memories here and there. And so this is really the bread and butter of bullet journaling. These are dailies, that's what they're called. So daily logs um, is what it comes from. And you're essentially writing down your to-do lists every day. So, you know, you start Wednesday, write down the date, and then you just go for it. I've tried lots of different spreads for these over time. I can show you what mine looks like without any decorations in it. This is, this is actually from this week in my bullet journal. And as you can see, I usually do the decorations afterwards and they don't always look like this. I spent a lot more time on this one because I was kind of using it as a memories spread too. But they just look like this, black and white. All I use is a simple Bic roller ball uh, or Bic round stick grip. It's a, a ballpoint pen, not a roller ball. And then I can decorate it afterwards with washi tape and things like that. And some of the earlier ones actually as well. Let me show you a spread there. Something like this is what it might have looked like five years ago. And you'll see that the pen kind of makes a bit of a difference as well. I was using a quite a thin pen here, a gel pen. And here it's just a ballpoint. So if that's something that is important to you, that's something to consider. But in any case, going back to the bullet journal spreads, this is a daily, daily spread. And then you can have your monthly spreads. So those are essentially calendars that you can keep in your bullet journal and plan things out farther ahead. It's kind of the way that the bullet journal system does that. And those are called monthlies or calendar spreads. This is what my April one looked like from last year. And a fun thing about this one actually is that I, as you can tell from the colors and the washi tape I used and all that, I was really going for a pastel neutral, maybe not neutral, but pastel like soft colors type of thing. And the black that you see here is definitely not in line with that. And the reason is that when I wrote out the dates, I was referring to the March calendar instead of the April one. So obviously they were all wrong and I ended up using a black uh, India ink marker. Those are a little bit better because you can write with white on top. And that's what it looks like. I quite like how it turned out. It's quite a nice contrast. But the purpose of this spread is to plan, plan farther out ahead of time. And as you can see, a lot of these spreads are essentially planner spreads. So they're something that you might find in a planner, but it's custom to how, how you do things. Um, same with here. I've got some habit trackers here as well as time trackers. So I like to keep track of how much time I spend on different things. So that's what I've got along there. So that's an intro to bullet journaling. Again, the two things that I like to say to anyone who's just starting out is one, it's chronological. So think of it as a chronological notebook of your life, of the sticky notes you would normally have on your wall, of the lists that you normally put on scrap pieces of paper. They're all contained in here. And the second thing, which I really liked that Kat said in our live stream um, with Kat's planner, she said that it's a planner that she designs herself. And that's kind of the other thing about bullet journaling. Now I'm gonna get into the spread ideas. And before I do that, I'm gonna just add a comment. What spreads do you use in your bullet journal? 
I can, I'll share what I use, but of course it's even better when we get inspired by each other and what everyone else is doing as well. So let me know what spreads you use in your bullet journal. And I think, did I miss anything? No, I think that's good. So, oh yes, I was gonna say some resources. So the live stream that we did a few weeks ago about bullet journaling is on YouTube. So that's a great resource. I really did a quick run through just now on how to start, but that's a great place to go for more in depth on like the beginnings of bullet journaling. And today we're gonna focus on the different spreads that you can use. So to start, one thing that I did when I was working, when I had this bullet journal, I believe, um, was I tried to create a collections notebook. So I mentioned this spread is called a monthly, then we've got the daily, and then the ones that I showed you at the start are mostly called collections. So they're just lists of things that you keep in your bullet journal. And one thing that I found was when I was making these collections in my bullet journal, I was often having to rewrite them into my next bullet journal. The way that I've kind of dealt with that now is I keep them mostly digital, but I tried at one point to keep them in a collections notebook like this. So it's just a small little notebook. And some of the things I had there, were, I made a, a copy of my Seize the Day Apocalypse from here. <laughs> so I know I genuinely rewrote that. I, I um, am quite surprised myself looking back. So it was many years ago. And it was kind of a way to not have to rewrite it again. So I put it in here. Um, some other spreads that I had in my collections notebook was this lifestyle habit spread that I didn't end up using. So the collections notebook didn't really work for me personally, but it's, a, it's still a good idea nonetheless, and I've seen quite a few people do it. A fun thing is these title ideas spreads. So if, uh, th first of all, this is a printable on my blog, Mistral Spirit. If you want to check it out, you can actually download it and print it and refer back to it. It's kind of uh, 2016, 2017 style. I think if you were in like on, in the Tumblr era of bullet journaling, you might recognize some of these titles from that type of style. It's really fun how what's what's in and like the the aesthetics change over time, and you also figure out your own style. And this is kind of the type of spread that you can keep in your bullet journal. Um, and refer back to it as you go. Obviously for the pure aesthetic purposes, like for making it prettier and all that, but another thing I like is with this spread, I made one called Design Guidelines, and this is also a printable on my website, and what I like about something like this is that if you're genuinely trying to learn the skill and trying to get better at designing, having it in your bullet journal to refer back to as you are decorating or crafting or even if you are you know out and about designing with a group if you're taking art classes or something like that it's a great reference for you and i think that's one of the best ways to continue learning is not just creating over and over but creating and then referring back to some principles and um, continuing to reflect and improve that way so those are fun spreads from a more artistic perspective, but obviously it applies to a lot of different things too. And then, oh, this is titles and dividers. Bam. There aren't that many dividers that I've used in the past. And then another one I had here was favorite recipes. Again, this is something that I kind of would keep digitally now, but it's a great idea if you are a very, if you're a more analog person. Oh, let's see, someone said I use six almost. Cover page, calendar, mood, habit tracker, playlist, and brain dump. I don't use weekly spread currently since I don't find myself mostly trained in journaling. I think the mood spreads are very cool. I actually don't have an example of a mood spread I've never tried that myself, but they are a really good tool to look back on. 
I guess I'd do that mostly digitally as well. All right, so those are um, some ideas in my collections notebook. But what I'll say about spread ideas in general, I like to classify them into certain categories. And I've got a blog post on Mistral Spirit called Bullet Journal Spread Ideas, uh, 62 bullet journal spread ideas in three minutes. It's also a YouTube video that some people have said goes really fast, but that's kind of the point. I wanted to quickly run through a lot of spread ideas. And I'm going to highlight just a few of them in our live stream today. But going by the categories, the first one is cover pages. So cover pages is the type of bullet journal spread that you would do to just kind of to decorate, to separate things for a new year, for example. This is the one that I had in 2021. And something I love to do with these types of spreads is have a word of the year. I've found that to be immensely helpful in the past. In 2018 in particular, I remember my word of the year was um, flow, and then in 2017 it was intent. And if I'm being honest, that really characterized how that year ended up being. And just having that, you know, it's not really, I don't just pick a word and put it in my bullet journal, but I really reflect on, first of all, choosing the word carefully and also how I can act it out that year. And, you know, it doesn't really have to be that year. It could be, you could do a new word every month or every, whenever you feel like it. But the intent one was all about um, intent, being intentional about my habits. And that was a year where I really grew in that way. And same with flow. 2018 was a year where I did a lot of traveling. So it was uh, a lot of learning to adapt to lots of different circumstances and just kind of go with the flow. So I really like that. So those are cover pages. And I'm very curious if, um, if anyone here keeps a bullet journal and does a cover page, what sort of ideas do you have for cover pages? In the past, I've done something like this. And I think I've done like a very minimalist one too. Here, 2019. <laughs> so actually 2019 was the one year I didn't have a word. So what cover pages do you use? Or what's your what's the design that you do? And then someone said, what things can we write in our monthly calendar? I'll do that next actually. So monthly calendar is a good one that changes depending on the projects that you're working on. And speaking of um, like questions and stuff, I forgot to mention at the start, if you have any questions about bullet journaling, leave them in the question box just uh, down here at the bottom right. And I'll take them as we, as we chat through some bullet journal spread ideas. And again, my name's Iwana. I'm part of the team here at the Washi Tape Shop, and I also have my own YouTube channel and blog focusing on bullet journaling and organization strategies. So I'm a student, and a lot of it focuses on how to stay on top of things in that way um, with organization strategies, productivity, planning. So anything I can help with it in terms of what's worked for me, I would love to share. And of course, if there's a question that you have something to contribute to, always leave your answer as well in the comments. It would be so nice if we could have a video call um, and I could see everyone's faces, but it's tough. All right, so these are bullet journal cover pages. Um, you can also do an index. In the Loic term notebooks, there's a built-in index and I used to try it in my earliest notebooks, but it just didn't really work for me. But it works in the Loic term because you've got page numbers here at the bottom. Now I'm curious what spread that is. Oh, it's a calendar spread. So let's chat about monthly spreads. This is an example of one that I would have at university. And I really, um, I'll show you the April one again. Because there's a funny thing there with bullet journaling and being in university. So you can see the April one is a lot more colorful and just like out there than this one. And the reason for that is that here I was, um, well, this is second year, but I've got a first year one as well. 
Um, where's that? Okay, here you go. So this one's even more bland than this one. Bland, minimal. Um, I kind of, I'm joking a little bit here when I say that because in first year, um, I wanted to have my bullet journal open next to me while I'm doing class and I, you know, I didn't want it to be very dramatic or out there. I guess I was a lot more conscious of it being visible to everyone um, just sitting next to me. So I really tried to keep it a little bit more minimal and, and quiet, restrained a little bit. And here, of course, I was working from home and taking classes from home, so I just went a little bit more ham with the decorations. And I just, I find that kind of fun because it is it is a real consideration. Like if you're uh, working a full-time job and you want to bring your bullet journal and have it in, in business meetings or have it open on your desk, um, you know, obviously your bullet journal might look different from someone who does a lot of scrapbooking and crafting and stuff like that. And hopefully that's not something that will dissuade you from starting in the first place or continuing because it doesn't need to be pretty. I really like these earlier spreads as well. Um, someone asked, are you an art major? No, I am studying at Queen's University in Kingston, Ontario, and I'm studying commerce. And I'm focusing on marketing, but I take a lot of courses in economics and law. That's what I'm interested in. Um, what are the sticky tabs for? Oh, all of these at the top are for me to know what spreads to show you. So I've got a lot of these things. For my bullet journal right now, I don't have any of that. It's more for my old ones because I can show you anything in here. Voila. <laughs> um, on your daily lists, do you do it at the beginning of the day? What do you intend to do? Or at the end of the day, what did you, what you did do? That's a really interesting question. I actually once saw, so long, like, like to answer your question really briefly, I do my daily lists at the beginning of the day or at the end of the day for the next day. So I plan it out in my daily um, spreads. Someone said, love the calendar setups. Well, thank you. Um, and the interesting thing I, I saw there was about writing out what you did do. That was a, a tip that I saw somewhere about being more motivated and uh, kind of appreciating your wins throughout the day. So if you're feeling like you're not getting very much done, a really great way to reset your mindset and to reframe um, what you are doing in the day is to keep track of what you actually accomplished rather than keeping a long list of things that you plan to do and seeing how many are unchecked by the end of the day. Actually making a list of what you did do, including things that weren't on your list. You know, if you cleaned up the kitchen or you know, did some administrative tasks. I think that's a really great tip for feeling more accomplished. And someone asked, where can we find your socials? So they're always tagged on the Instagram stories on the washi tape shop, but it's Mistral Spirit. So Mistral Spirit, I'll actually show you here. I don't know if you can read that. It's cursive, fancy cursive, but... And... Let's take a question from the question box. I see there are a few. Um, someone asked, do you fill your bullet journal every day? I mean, you literally bring the bullet journal with you all the time. Pretty much, yes. So it's a, it fits in my purse. And what I've, what I've started doing now, I'm in my very last semester of university, is I actually bring my purse to class and then I've got a larger purse that fits my laptop. So I kind of bring both of those rather than a backpack. It's uh, a little edgy in that way, but I find with the backpack, I just didn't want to keep moving everything over from my purse to my backpack and back and forth. And I don't have that many classes either. And I keep this in my purse. It fits really well. I wouldn't bring it if I'm just, you know, if I'm not planning on using it. It's really just if I'm planning to do some work, then I'll, I'll bring it. So I've gone through one category, which is cover pages of spread ideas. The second one, uh, another category I like to use is productivity. 
So those are things like lifestyle habits, so the, the lifestyle habit tracker that I showed you, um, motivation tips, if you've got a list of motivation that you want to keep adding to as you go. Uh, that's one of my favorite things to keep track of in list form, and I kind of have moved it digitally now, but keeping track of tips for myself from my past self as I go through times where I'm feeling unmotivated or low, I'll write down what worked to get me out of those moods and just keep track of that. Then tips to reset your sleep schedule or your current morning routine. I'll show you those too. Those are fun little productivity spreads. So this one was sleep schedule tips. And it's also on my blog. I don't think it's a printable, but I think you can take a closer look there if you're interested. And then... Oh, another interesting one. So kind of along the lines of productivity, but, you know, strategies, tools. This is a finance tracker. I didn't end up using finance trackers in my bullet journal because... It didn't really work for me to not be digital. I really like exporting directly from my bank and keeping it in like a file on my computer. But this is what I figured out. Like I spent a while brainstorming what it would look like if it was in my bullet journal. And this is what I would do. So finances, you've got here your different accounts and then your beginning and ending balance. And then there are a few different headings here. So income, these are your sources of income if you have multiple, if you're doing freelancing or, you know, one or one or two. And you've got uh, some of these headings. So like paid, incurred, client description and total. Then regular payments. So this is stuff like Spotify, Netflix, or whatever you've got there. Expenses and amounts owed and investments. Amounts owed is an interesting one. It's a typical accounting challenge where you might owe someone money, but you pay them the next month. So uh, it's helpful to keep track of that so you remember too. And also it'll affect your beginning and ending balances for this month and the next. So that's a way to use, to keep track of finance in your bullet journal. I've seen people keep track of lots of different things. So if you're more of an analog person, this might work well for you or digital, whatever you prefer. Then another one I wanted to show you if I can find it, it's morning routine. Oh, here's a good one too. I've been showing you a lot of collection spreads that are full page, but they don't all have to be. So this one is a little let's get motivated spread. It's similar to what I was just saying where I like to keep track of tips for myself, for my future self. And here it was just in the middle of my week I wanted to write down some tips that have worked for me. My three reasons, a check-in, and I guess my priorities at the time. Then another one, another category is meals and recipes. One of my favorite ones here, if you've been watching the live streams for a while, you know I drink coffee every morning, so I've got a spread in here for um, coffee combinations, I think I called it. Maybe not the perfect word there, combinations. But there are different types of coffee drinks. Um, and this is obviously like a creative spread, more for a creative outlet than anything practical necessarily. But that's really a, what a bullet journal is for as well. It's a, an outlet for writing down if you're journaling or, you know, drawing. So that's a fun one. And of course, the recipes that I showed you in my collections spread. Collections notebook here. I'll show it again if you're just joining. It was like this, favorite recipes. So some yummy ingredients, some raw snacks and some prepped snacks. These are just some, some ideas. Then the next category is organization and strategy. So this is really about things like the monthly events schedule, the deadlines pl planner for school, and my bullet journal system. So 
something like this. Oops. Here we go. Something like this would be a great spread to help you out if you're trying to figure out a system that works for you. And I definitely, I remember this was many years ago, but I spent quite a while figuring out a good bullet system for myself. And the amazing thing is that I use this now for everything. Um, that's the beauty of finding a system that works really well for you and also that is adaptable for lots of other things. So I don't just use this bullet system for my bullet journal, but I use it when I'm uh, taking notes. Also, when I'm just in a meeting and I'm taking notes for every kind of purpose and taking some time to figure that out is really helpful. And then here I've got some color coding systems. These ones I don't use anymore. I, th I keep it a lot more simple now, I think, but. Someone asked, are the coffee mugs drawn or stickers? These are drawn here with watercolor. Should they be stickers? What do you think? I'm always interested to know what you guys would, uh, would like. We can definitely make them into stickers. So let me know. So that's organization and strategy. I think finance tracker could kind of fit under here as well. Planning my note system too. Um, then we've got decorative. So I showed you the graphic design guidelines, which was in this notebook. I've also done, this was, I guess, more for a video, but you can keep track of so graphic design guidelines. You can keep track of different styles that you've tried over time. And, you know, all of these spreads, they kind of have different purposes. You can have spreads that are archival, more so kind of like journaling for you to look back on someday or to keep track of memories that you're making at the time. Some of them can be reference spreads, so something like this that you would refer back to quite often as you're working towards a goal or on a skill. And some of them are purely transient, I like to say. So my bullet journal daily spreads, most of the ones that I'm using currently because I've moved those other ones, like the archival, I keep that mostly in my journal, which is on my computer. Or my reference spreads, I also keep that digitally now. But something like this, like my daily tasks. This is kind of, I consider it a transient spread. I'm not really gonna refer back to it at any time and it's purely just functional for me to use in the moment this week. And of course, the decorations that I sometimes add with washi tape and stuff like that, like this, are just for fun, just for me, for after. For decorative, there are lots of other things you can do here, of course. You can do a mood board, title font ideas. Here's one of my favorite mood boards that I've done. This was in my, at the start of my bullet journal, so it's one of those first few spreads that I did. Then washi tape swatching. Nice things to draw is another cool spread idea that I've done. So this is a grid. I obviously didn't fill it up completely. But it's a grid of different doodles that you can do in your bullet journal. I think with this one, I kind of wanted to go for a more minimalist type of feel in the bullet journal. And I was in that, for my personal style as well, in that phase. So I sort of, I wanted to do things mostly in black and white with some markers and washi tape here and there. And these were basically a list of some things that I could draw. Do you have anything to add to this, by the way? I was really... I remember at the time I tried to think of other things I could add, but I kind of ran out. So you can do patterns and textures, birds, butterflies, fruit, elephants, flowers, palm trees, coffee, cups, fern, trees, houses, <laughs> owls. This is one of my favorite things to draw. I really like very busy type of looking things. And he's got a lot of patterns on him. Waves in this style. Oh, pandas. That's a good one. Here's a little cat. 
One thing I was trying here was in graphic design, you often see people do the outline a lot thicker than the details on the inside. So I was trying out that style there. Planets, cacti, trees, Christmas trees, roses, and buildings. So there you go. Um, teacup and saucer, someone said. Pandas. So hopefully this is, you know, some ideas for you guys to try. I'm no expert in bullet journaling or anything like that. I'm just, I've been using a bullet journal for myself, so that's what works for me. Um, not necessarily about this spread, but in general, the spreads that I'm showing you now. And then we've got three other categories. So introspective, that's a good one. Ooh, cute mushrooms. That's a good one. Uh, so introspective is basically collections that are helpful to you to reflect, kind of like journaling spreads. So some prompts there are what does success mean to you, mental health strategies for when I'm feeling low, favorite quotes, and things I like about me, things I like about the world, stuff like that. So those are introspective spreads that you can try, and there's so many prompts online for you to check out. One thing I like to do for introspective spreads is there's a website called positivepsychology.com. I'm going to put that in here. I think more people should know about it. So that's a really good site. It's a, a site with a lot of cognitive um, behavioral therapy journaling spreads uh, and like prompts. So if you want to work on certain things, getting rid of certain mindsets that hold you back, it's a really, really great resource that I've used quite a lot in the past. Then we've got the category of lifelong learning. So there are some things like reasons you love to learn, this week in learning, cool things you'd like to learn someday, podcast recommendations, Something I did there was this week in learning spread, and it's basically a spread that kept track of different things that I learned that week from various of my classes, so marketing, economics, ethics, or questions that I had, interesting discussion questions. And this, I kind of decorated a little bit. I started doing this in early 2020 when we just went into lockdown, so I had a lot more time as I was doing classes online. But since then, I've pretty much moved this entirely to Notion, and that's where I keep track of things that I've learned. And it's a really, really cool big database of everything that I've found interesting or learned. And it's, I, quite, I refer back to it quite a bit. Then notes from a book I read, notes from a lecture. I'll show you a notes from a lecture. And of course, I have my own separate notebook for lecture notes, although I do most of those on OneNote now. But sometimes you go to a lecture that's like a one-off lecture, and that's what I did here. I kept track of, uh, I, I kept some notes there, just in a, you know, randomly interspersed with my regular daily tasks. And that was what I used to take notes as with blue and pink and black. I don't really use that many colors anymore, but I have the same system pretty much and same symbols here too. Notes from a book I read is another thing. And of course, things like podcast recommendations. That's something else that I do. Here it is. So this was, again, back in 2020 when I was listening to a lot more podcasts. I don't listen to the, some of these anymore, um, but it's a fun little spread to keep track of that stuff and to get some ideas. And then finally, we've got to-do lists. So besides your regular daily to-do lists, you can have fun stuff to do in your free time. Um, summer bucket list, an apocalypse, which I've shown you, is essentially a 
list of things that you want to do, like a bucket list, I suppose, but it's a list of experiences you want to have someday. And then long-term projects, milestones of the year, stuff like that. Those are all to-do lists. So that is a ton of different spread ideas. I hope you got some good ideas there. And I'm gonna flip the camera around and see if there are any questions before we wrap up today. Um, so again, today we chatted about bullet journal spread ideas. If you want to see more about how to start bullet journaling, so the basics of it and the tools that you might need, then there's a video on YouTube on the washi tape shop all about that from our last live stream on bullet journaling. And that's a great resource for you. And of course on YouTube, there are lots of other resources about bullet journaling that you can check out if you're just starting or if you wanna change things up. Um, I don't remember if I answered this one already, but what to write in our monthly calendar spread. So I've changed things up. I think I've kind of had two different types of monthly calendar spreads. One of them is just a list of events to go to. And that's what I did at the beginning. I wrote down events ahead of time that I would want to go to, but now I keep that in Google Calendar because it gives me a reminder as well. And it's a lot easier to move things around. You can also share invites with other people. And so instead I use my calendar for my school tasks and deadlines. So I write down what I have to do on the day that it's due. So all of these dots that you see on the calendar, those are assignments that I had to hand in that day. And I kind of work ahead. So I have only the deadlines on the calendar. And so if the day is here today, I'll look ahead like what's due this week that I need to submit and I'll work on that. So that's how I do it in university and it's worked really well for me. And now I kind of do a lot of that on to-do list, which is a digital to-do list. And instead, what I've done with my calendar setups is I just use the habit tracker portion of them. We actually set this up together in a live stream last month. But I just keep track of the time I spend on certain things and habits like going to the gym or sleeping, how many hours I spend sleeping. That's kind of like my version of a mood tracker to see if it affects how energized I feel, and of course it does. Um, oh, could you give a list of things you had on your bucket list for encouragement? Uh, I have my entire bucket list on my blog on mistrelspirit.com, so you can check it out there. You just Google Apocalypse as well, Mistral Spirit Apocalypse. But let's see if there are a few. It's really funny, some of these are things that I wouldn't actually be interested in doing anymore. I think I was a lot more excited about things uh, like doing lots of different experiences but for example be an extra in a movie I think a lot of people probably have that one be on a radio show I actually was on a radio show I was driving home one time like just a short drive and the, on the radio it came on that you could uh, it's like a lunchtime trivia so I pulled over the car and I called in for the lunchtime trivia and answered it and I was actually on the radio afterwards, and it was wrong, but it was really fun. <laughs> so it's quite easy to be on a radio show. I was also on live TV a few years ago, presenting a segment on Crayola with my blog, Mr. Spirit. So that was quite a cool experience. I still think about that a lot. It's really cool seeing the set. Get my ears pierced, of course I've got that. Um, take a cooking class, go on a winery tour, make friends with someone you just met. Um, quite a few of these I've done since 2017 when I made this list. But again, that list is on my blog. Oh, is there any way we can draw a monthly habit tracker easily and efficiently? So I usually just draw it with a pen and I refer to my, the calendar just to see the shape of it. There are probably, so I don't know of any stickers I think there are probably some stamps for it, but if you are interested in stamps or anything like that, let me know. Is anyone interested in habit tracker stamps? Send some hearts if you are, or leave it in the comments. Or anything to do with planning. 
stuff like that. We can, we just launched some new stamps which are super cool. They're um, using a very, like a high density resin material. So they're very clear and crisp when you stamp them on the page. And always looking for new suggestions. So let me know if you have any suggestions for stamps that you want to see. And please share ideas for cover pages. So cover pages on the book itself, these are the things that I've done in the past. And then I, I kind of like to keep it minimal for that. It's You can totally go crazy as well. I've seen some people do that on their laptops, but minimal is nice too. And for the actual cover pages, I've shown a few at the start of the video, so you can watch the replay when we post it in a few hours. But some simple ones are this minimal one in 2019, like that, very simple. And then this is a more floral one. And I think I haven't done one yet for my bullet journal right now. So maybe that can be a future live stream. And of course, did I do one here? Oh look at that, I have, this one was kind of my cover page in this notebook. So there was no year or anything. All right. And I'll wrap up with this question. So someone asked, are you the owner or do you work for the washi tape store? I'm you. So my name is Iwana. I run the live streams here on the washi tape shop and I'm part of the team. And I also have a YouTube channel and vlog, Mistral Spirit, which is why we're talking about bullet journaling right now, because that's what I share. I share a lot of organization tips and strategies, especially coming from a student's perspective. So things that have worked for me in terms of developing strategies to help me stay organized in university. And yes, so I'm not the owner of the washi tape shop, but I'm part of the team. So thank you so much for watching and for being here, spending your morning, well, spending whatever time of day it is with me. Um, for me, it's morning. And again, a reminder, we've got a discount code for anyone joining. This is the best discount code that you can get on the washi tape shop. So it's for anyone in our live streams. It's always backwards. Maybe I should write this in the mirror version so that I can hold it up like this and then use this one when I'm laying flat. Oops. So at checkout, you can use live 15 for 15% 15 off. And it's a way to show that you're coming from the live stream. So it's a great way to support them. And it's also just a thank you to you. We've also got a lot of guests coming up this month. So stay tuned on our Instagram page. We're always gonna announce the day before on Instagram stories who it's gonna be with. And also have a question box so that you can ask questions ahead of time. And also the topic. So you know if you wanna join and if you wanna set a reminder. Lots of guests from the community. All right, thank you for joining. I will see you on Sunday, although I think this week is gonna be on Monday because of the time zone difference with our guest. But I will, um, I'll share that on our Instagram stories. Have a wonderful rest of your Wednesday and thank you again for joining. Bye everyone.